you are qualified. Hello once again, it is Fake Eric coming at you with another This Week in Runeterra. I hope you guys have been well. It has been a minute, been real busy practicing tournament lineups for the upcoming seasonal tournament. But to start off today, I want to talk about exactly that. So during the time I'm recording this video, we just reached the final deadline for all the players trying to qualify for the seasonal tournament through the Masters ladder. I was fortunate enough to qualify, so I'm pretty happy about that. That had a last, last minute climb after dropping lots of LP, but congratulations to anybody who was able to qualify. For anybody who's not aware, actually in game, there is a tournament a tab that you can click on which gives you all the information that you would need including times and schedules for certain things including an easy to click through uh, link to take you back to all the rules and information prizes etc again congratulations to everybody who was able to qualify through the master's ladder by the time i upload this video in a few more hours there's going to be a last chance gauntlet for so for anybody who else who didn't qualify through the master's ladder you're going to be able to uh, participate in the last chance gauntlet whether or not you obtained many prime glories everybody can jump into it it's going to be the first 324 players who complete the prime glory gauntlet that will qualify i believe this is going to go on for about 12 hours after it starts so you've got plenty of time get in there uh, good luck to anybody trying to get their last chance into the tournament Moving along today, the favorite section of the week, the deck of the week, is probably one of the most hype moments. And the deck I'm going to be sharing today is going to be Impertuous Panda's take on this new free old with a splash of Targon Allegiance uh, deck. Pretty much a very powerful uh, mid range deck that pretty much only features Pale Cascade as a bonus tool. This way, we can utilize the card that is Averosian Outriders for anybody who doesn't know what this actually does. It is a uh, grants allegiance. Sorry, so if you get the allegiance buff, you'll grant the top unit on your deck plus three plus three and overwhelm. It's actually quite a lot of tempo for a four drop that has a three three stats and already has overwhelm. Granting the next unit, sometimes it could be quite a cheap unit that you play uh, on curve with some other units to provide a lot of pressure. He also did give shout outs to Rico Rex, who was one of the other people or players who may have like kind of come up with the idea and the concept of this. And perhaps Impertuous Panda has taken a couple of tweaks to his own. He ended up going 20 and 4 with this list and making a bit of a climb. A very cool deck, one I might experiment with myself. I like the idea. Uh, deck code will be in the description if anybody is interested in having a go with this deck themselves. And guys, for this week's This Week in Runeterra, I'm going to feature a clip in tandem with our next topic about the European Masters, which we deemed and named Portugal our European Champions. So that was an amazing feat for Portugal. I was actually rooting for them all along, as there's a few players on that team I know. The clip of the week is going to go out to the moment. Portugal takes it all. What a feeling. What a feeling. <laughs> Look at that. That's a beautiful sight. That's a beautiful sight. Well, there you have it, guys. The European Masters Tour is all over. Portugal managed to go 3 1 against France in the grand final. We also had Spain taking third place to join in on the cash prize. But what an amazing tournament, what an amazing experience, and a step forward uh, for the Legends of Runeterra game itself. And hopefully, we can see more stuff like this in the future. And hopefully, hopefully, sometime soon, we can start to get the Asia, uh, Asia Masters Tour and also the North American Masters Tour. Love to try and qualify for this one myself. But yeah, once again, congratulations to Portugal. Congratulations to all the players. Pepsi Cola, Amantius, and also Cyber Dragon. Hopefully I said the names right. <laughs> and congratulations to France as the runner-up and Spain for taking third place. And congratulations to every team that was able to qualify and take part in such an amazing tournament. So we're in this current point in Legends of Runeterra where we have a little bit of a you know, a drought in terms of new stuff information. We're kind of at this point where like the meta's not really evolving. We're still kind of waiting for new cards to come out with the upcoming expansion. So we should be expecting some spoilers very soon. Everyone's just been kind of grinding ladder. 
the meta has been kind of on hold at the moment but i guess this week and on today's episode of this week in Runeterra, i just want to talk about go hard for a moment and its influence over the meta game go hard was one of the few kda cards that actually was able to find consistent success and actually uh, make an impact on the meta game. It's just a very uh, strong card and a very uh, polarizing card that causes making a deck such as this to find a place in the meta and actually toppling the meta game, becoming one of the tier one decks. Shout outs to Team Leviathan Gaming for their meta snapshot at the moment. They're providing pretty consistent uh, updates. So I'll leave a link to this blog down in the description below. But yeah, well, depending on what variant you're playing, the idea here is that Gohard, Bilgewater and Shadow Wilds, some people play Callista, some people don't play Lidro, some people play Ruination. There's actually so many different variants of this specific deck and archetype that it's really starting to influence the metagame and for the upcoming seasonal tournament, this could definitely be an unexpected deck for many players to be bringing. It's going to be like a pick or ban kind of thing. It's going to be like a, a lineups are going to kind of be able to beat this deck. It's definitely caused waves throughout the meta just for the past like two weeks and since it actually come out. And one of the other things to take note of for the Go Hard deck is kind of like it was a little bit of a power creep for some of the other popular archetypes. Like we're talking about like the Swain Twisted Fate and the Pirate Aggro and even toppling some of the other kind of interesting aggro decks such as discard aggro and stuff. Um, it's flexibility and game strategy is unlike any other deck. Its ability to shift its strategy mid game to late game is actually kind of ridiculous. And the ability to curve out early and play as an aggro deck it's utterly insane. It kind of, it definitely was the Swain TF back in the day where its strategy could very much shift throughout the game. Uh, but just the power of Go Hard is unmatched and there's no other card like it. And its ability to tackle aggro decks as well as out pacing some control decks is utterly ridiculous. And this deck has really proved to be top of the meta game. And until maybe the next set of cards come out, we can expect to see this all over the seasonal tournament and maybe it might get nerfed in the future, but it won't be until after the seasonal tournament. So yeah, the, the Go Hard caused a massive impact and get ready to see lots of this in the upcoming seasonal tournament. Thank you once again, guys. Consider leaving a like. It does help out a lot on the video. It means it, it, it does a lot. So like any likes, subscriptions are greatly appreciated as well. You've all been too kind and good luck to everybody competing in the seasonal tournament. I'm going to be practicing quite a lot myself as I have been over the past week and a bit. Anyway, you guys be good to each other. I'll see you next week.